that you have done in our lives. It's because of you that we are saved. It's because of you that we have eternal life. Why do we worship you? You're the reason that we're here. You're the one that created us to bring pleasure to yourself. And we thank you now for the Holy Spirit that lives in each and every Christian. And he directs us in all truth. He's a spirit of truth and not a spirit of lies. And we thank you that when we hear him, we can know that it's truth. Open our hearts and let the spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon each and every one of us. That the word of God would become alive to us. And when it becomes alive to us, we become alive. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the first scripture put up there is Matthew 26, 28. We want to talk about a little bit about the blood tonight, about the cross, about Jesus willing to sacrifice his life for each and every one of us. And Jesus is speaking and he says, For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Put the Amplified up there next. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which ratifies the agreement and is being poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. God takes the simple things to confound the wise. Isn't that amazing? We've been cleansed by the blood that actually poured out of Jesus' body. We've been redeemed by that blood. Redeemed means we've been bought back because of the, the, the sin of Adam. We became sinners. The next scripture I want you to turn to, sometimes we have to go back and see why we do what we do. Turn to Romans uh, 5. Hmm. Romans 5, let's start with 18. Romans 5, 18. Well then, as one man's trespass, one man's false step, and falling away. Now who is that one man? Adam. Adam. led to condemnation for all men. It passed all the way down to, to us. So one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. Now that's powerful. You know, we, <clears throat> in my life anyway, I've heard more of Adam trespassing, but not a whole lot about what Jesus did. So by his one act of obedience, we have been made righteous. You don't have to try to make yourself righteous. You are righteous because he made us righteous. I've learned never to argue with God. If God says you're righteous, why would we argue with that? How many has argued with the Lord over that besides me? Yeah, we, we just, it was so good we couldn't believe it. But God has spoken. Yeah, that's true by the one sin that Adam did, one dis, <clears throat> disobedience. Uh, Joey, would you uh, bring the cross over here? I'll let you carry the cross tonight. Put it right behind me. By that disobedience of one man, we all became sinners, but by the obedience of the one man, Christ Jesus, we have all been made righteous by that one act. Now that's a powerful thought. This week, Christ, as we celebrate resurrection time and the time that Christ died on the cross, 
many people see Jesus there. <clears throat> I don't know if you've uh, grown to that point in which you see yourself there. But the beautiful thing about it is <clears throat> the Adam that made us sinners died on the cross and we died on the cross. Now how many of you have really accepted your death? Don't raise your hands. You need to accept and believe that you died with Christ. Romans 6 tells us that very clearly. What a salvation story. For years, I've tried to kill myself in my early Christian days. <laughs> How many still trying to kill yourself? Don't raise your hands. I know. I know the struggles. I know the struggles. <laughs> so you're not going to come into your rest that Hebrews talks about until we accept the fact. And all of us accepts the fact that we are, we're sinners, but are we accepting the fact now, and I said fact, that we are righteous in God? Amen. See, when you really believe that and accept that, life, resurrected life. See, now we believe it for a short time when, when you're hearing Pastor Bob, but when you get out there in the world, it's like, where did that resurrected life go? The first problem that comes up, you fall apart. No, I mean, not this group, but there are people that fall apart. And I understand that. I've done my part of falling apart. But I got all myself back together, and I don't fall apart anymore. Because I believe the gospel. For the gospel... The gospel is the power of God unto salvation, unto salvation. I believe. I believe that I'm a new creation. I believe that Christ lives within me by his Holy Spirit. So as you believe these things and accept these things, have you noticed how the devil will work on you and make you think, you're still a worm in the cabbage patch. How many's ever felt like you were a worm in a cabbage patch? All right, that's, I'm talking to the right crowd. You're not. You're a saint now. You are a son and daughter of the living God, and the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you. Let's read that again. Well, then, as one man's trespass, one man's false step, and, uh, and falling away led to condemnation for all men. So one man's act, and who is that one man's act? Jesus of righteous. One man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. God is not holding anything against us. But, Bob, the other day I told a lie. God took care of that too. Aren't you glad? Huh? 1 John 1, 9, put it up there. I want to really drive this into you because, see, I see as the church comes alive and accepts what Christ does and who you are, your new identification in Christ, all kind of good things happened in your life, okay? Look, if we freely admit that we have sin, let me ask you this question. I assume that we're all Christians in here. We all know the Lord. Since that day that you accepted Jesus, have you sinned since? How many have sinned? Let's see your hands. How many, how many is alive in here? Some of you are not raising your hand. I'm going to put a rope on there and just pull it up. Your hand go up. Aren't you glad that that he put 1 John 1, 9 in there because he knew that we would probably sin. Okay? And so, what do you do when you sin? If we complain and murmur, huh? if we confess our sin, the Bible says, God is faithful and just. Now, i got a question. Is he faithful and just? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. 
Okay? Faithful and just to do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we're back on the right track again. Say, we're clean. Now, I quoted that scripture for years, and probably some of you have too, but I missed one thing I didn't receive. Everybody say, receive. 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 All right, say, it. I, receive. I receive. I am clean. I, am clean. I, receive. I receive that the blood of Christ has not lost its power. I receive. I'm a child of God. I receive. I have eternal life. I receive that I'm good looking. Got you. Got to be good looking. I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, just because you have a problem, put that on the one side. Everybody has problems, don't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you got kids, you got problems. If you're married, you got. As, as a pastor, I have to laugh at some people. This guy I'm canceling, trying to get rid of his wife. He wants a divorce. This. Guy over here wants to get married and find somebody that would have him and marry him. And sometimes I said, you know, if I had the power, I'd just do some change in her, right? You know what I mean? Oh, you want to be married? Here, take this one here. <laughs> Live with her for about uh, three months and then come back and check with me and see how you're doing. And you probably say, man, I'd like to get, <laughs> oh, man, man, I, got, I wish I was single. <laughs> how many of you understand what I'm talking about? You know, see, I deal with a lot of people, and that's the way it is, you know. But, you know, I never did want to be divorced from Susan. You know what I mean? I tell you, I never did. Anybody here ever want to be? Don't, 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 don't. don't. <laughs> All right, look at, look at this now. Turn to 1 John 1, 9. And, oh, that's it, on the, in the, in the uh, King James, if you don't mind, uh, Willie. Because that's a lot in that. All right, very simple. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now let me tell you something about sin. David said something like, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. I used to ponder on that. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But since I've been afflicted, I don't go astray anymore. Right. Hmm. Being afflicted must have taught him something. You know what I mean? Uh, let me tell you something what I've found in my own life, and this may help you. <sighs> we got something in our life that, you know, that we, we fall back into. You know, it's that... that particular peculiar sin that may be, could be anything, you know, you name it, you know what it is in your life. And when you, when you fall into it, <clears throat> then you're so disgusted with yourself. That there's pain that comes into you, the pain of, oh God, I displeased the Lord again. Are you listening to me now? I displeased the Lord again, <clears throat> and yet I can't get drawn back to that. I remember when I had to get the deliverance from, from the TV, you know, back years ago, I remember when uh, they had like naked women on TV. You ever seen that, men? <laughs> on TV? On TV. Well, it was in the TV, you know. And, 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 and and I found out what station that was, and I keep, I'd go back to that station and kick, kick, wow, you know. One day Susan came in. Boy, I tell you, I never that that thing. I mean, I hit that cl that remote control, boom, real quick, like. But see, I didn't really need her to correct me because every time I looked at it, I felt dirty and clean, unclean, and condemned. Anybody agree with that? 
Okay? You know what I'm talking about. We're all human. Let's tell it like it is. I think it will. <clears throat> and so, man, that was painful. You know, about two or three days, you're disgusted with yourself. You beat yourself up. And uh, so disgusted. And then for about a week, you get cleaned up. You go to First John 1, 9, and you're clean again. You're feeling good. And then that, the thing draws you again. And you click that TV station on again. Ah, man. See, it, it, a lot of the things that are in us is what I would call natural. We gravitate, we gravitate towards those things. How many of you know I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this to help you? Some of you, of course, I can see some of you, oh, I... You know, <laughs> women don't bother me. Men, men don't bother me. Lie, lie, lie. It talks about liars not inheriting the kingdom of God. It don't say anything about people watching TV and bad things on TV won't inherit the kingdom of God. But all liars will end up in the, in, in, not in the kingdom of, of God, but in the kingdom of darkness. Now, I'm, I'm, helping, I'm using that because most of you, you know, they, people struggle with that. I know what people struggle. I know what I struggle with. Here's what I'm getting at. The pain, the pain of the, all that condemnation, displeasing God, just tears your faith down. It tears your spirit down. You feel dirty. You feel unclean. You let God down again, and you love God. And how many know what I'm talking about? But see, you, you go to First John, you get cleaned up again. Now, First John is really not the full answer. It's part of the answer to get you back on the road. Here's what I'm getting at: the pain of wanting to smoke that weed, or the pain of wanting to take that drug, or the pain of wanting to watch that TV, or whatever it is. That is a uh, that pain is less. In other words, if you struggle not to do it, yes, it's painful, but it is not as bad as that pain when you look at something or do something that you know is not right. That pain is worse than this pain over here of wanting to do it and desire to do it. That's less. How many understand what I'm talking about? All right, I'm, I'm going to I'm show you in the Scriptures directly. And so God will use that many times to wake you up and realize what pain do you want. You see, David said, I want to stray before I was afflicted, but since I was afflicted over here, I don't go astray no more. How many understand that? That's where spankings come in sometimes with our kids. Have you ever noticed a dog, you know, you want to train him, and so what you do, you give him a little nugget every time he does what is right. And when he doesn't do right, you fuss at him. But he learns, hey, if I do what is right, I get blessed. But if I do what is wrong, I get fussed at. So by that, he learns, hey, I'd rather be over here, do what is right, and get all those goodies. How many understand what I'm talking about? Turn, if you will, and, 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 and we're talking about the blood, but see, we have to come back and realize that we need daily cleaning. We have to understand that the blood cleanses us, but we're going to get back just a little bit. I want you to turn, if you will, to 1 Peter 4. This came so alive to me many years ago, and the Lord's brought it back to my mind. 1 Peter 4. All right, you got that up there? 1 Peter, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 4, verse 1. I'm going slow tonight because I want to put this principle, get you to understand this, if you're ever going to get victory over certain sins. Okay, 
So since Christ suffered in the flesh for us, for you, arm yourself with the same thought and purpose, patiently to suffer rather than to fail to please God. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? Now look at that scripture. So since Christ suffered in the flesh for us, for you, arm yourselves with the same thought or attitude and purpose, patiently to suffer rather than fail to please God. Sometimes you're in a situation that you're suffering, you're in pain. And it's just natural for us to want to get out of pain. That's me, 100%. <laughs> I don't like pain. But there's sometimes you may have to stay in that pain. Why? Oh, well, let's read on. For whatever has, <clears throat> for whoever has suffered in the flesh, having the mind of Christ <clears throat> is done, all right, for whoever has suffered in the flesh, having the mind of Christ, is done with intentional sin. Has stopped pleasing himself. That's torture, isn't it? Come on, church. Huh? That's torture. Okay. And the world and please God. Quiet in here. Quiet in here. Hmm. Let's read the next verse. So that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living by his human appetites and desires. But, the, but he lives for what God wills. All right, go to the next verse. For the time that is past already suffers for doing what the Gentiles like to do, living as you have done in the shameful, shameless, insolent wantonness, in lustful desires, drunkenness, reviling, drinking, spouts, and a Abominable, lawless adultery. Idolatry, I'm sorry. All right. Put the uh, verse of Scripture back there. Uh, put number, verse 2 up there again. Look what it says. So that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living by this his uh, human appetites and desires, but he lives for what God wills. So by suffering, there's a teaching going on. It's like uh, Hebrew says, discipline for the moment is not pleasant. So when you're in that, when God is disciplining us, it's not pleasant. And I, I want to tell you, say something. You, we will go around the mountain until we become obedient, until we learn that that suffering, that, that, that I am suffering, even though my flesh is satisfied, but my spirit is grieved because I gave into that sin, and we walk around unhappy and with no power in our life. And we find ourselves in and out, in and out. One day we're carnal. I mean, we, we used to be. Uh, not no more. Most of us have reached that level of, of obedience. So actually through that discipline that the Spirit does within us, you know what I'm talking about. The minute you do something wrong, you feel bad. You feel miserable. Condemnation comes in left and right. Because the Bible says there's no condemnation for those that walk in the Spirit. So you've got to live in the Spirit to keep the condemnation off of you. You can't escape it. 
You cannot escape God's discipline. Thank God He won't let us go. So David said, I went astray before I was afflicted. But since I've been afflicted, <clears throat> I don't go astray no more. I walk with God. But being humans that we are, you may go a whole year. And then all of a sudden you fail. Now you're back over here in this suffering again. Oh, God, why? For a whole year I went. And then you realize, boy, without God's grace, yes. <laughs> without God's grace, there is no way. <coughs> I am what I am by the grace of God. If you can understand that, you can grow and mature and stay out of the suffering of disobedience and learn to live in the spirit where you are more obedient. This is why Susan found out a long time ago, do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. Here's the scene. It's Sunday morning. It's raining outside. Of course, you got to bed early, 12 o'clock. You wake up. You got to get, get up. and oh it's, oh, it's Sunday again. <clears throat> I knew what Pastor Bob's going to preach. He's going to preach on sin. I don't do that all the time. But I tell you how to overcome it. And we sleep in. Anybody have ever experienced that besides me? Two honest people in here. Three honest people. <laughs> my, my, my. Maybe I need to talk about honesty. <laughs> <laughs> Getting hot in here, isn't it? <laughs> but see, that's the human element within us, and you've got to you've got to deal with that human element. And, and and we belong to God, and He can do what He wants to do with His property. We belong to Him. Yeah. Have you settled that in your life? Yeah. I guarantee you. I'm going to try to put it down where some of you live, and I know nobody here does this, but let's just say you've got a husband and a wife, and they fuss. Not discuss, but they fuss. How do you think they feel? Hmm? Well, if you got your own way, you feel like, Got my own way again. And then all of a sudden, what's that I feel? I feel bad. Oh, my goodness, I'm back in that same pattern again. I'm suffering in the flesh, suffering in the spirit. So you learn that that's a discipline of the Lord. You can't escape it. If somebody's not doing right, I tell you what, you cannot go far enough to escape God's dealing in your life. If you make your bed in hell, he'll be there. Shaking your cage. Say, son, now let's come on back home. Because the Bible says, that if God don't discipline us, if he don't correct us, what does it say? I hate to say it. Somebody, somebody say it. Yeah, illegitimate. You're not really a child of God. Now, you may have some troubles in your life, and I'm trying to help you, because I want to get you out of this miserable arena that you're living in and, and get over here in, in obedience in the spirit where there is no condemnation. How many has ever, when you went to school and you cheated? Don't raise your hands, 100%. I think that's how my neck grew long. I, uh,
And you cheat and you feel bad, don't you? You feel awful. You're suffering in the flesh. It'll happen every time. It's just like a hot stove. I don't care. You, put, you touch that hot stove, it'll burn you every time and you'll suffer. If you're disobedient and you're not walking in obedience, yes, the blood will cleanse you when you confess. But if you fall back into the same old habit again, then you're going to have all that miserable condemnation on you. And the devil's going to eat you for breakfast, for lunch, for supper, and a midnight snack. How many know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of you haven't woke up yet, but uh, I'll keep preaching. <clears throat> Let's get back on the blood. All right. Thank God that he has done great things for us. But we have to learn, don't we, how to stay out of trouble. Put Ephesians 1, 7 up there now. 1, 7. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption. And what is redemption? Hmm? He bought us back. Redeemed us, brought us back. Delivered, deliverance and salvation through his blood. The remission of forgiveness of our offenses, shortcomings, trespasses, in accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor. Now, when you come into that and it's, and, and it's operating in your life, you feel great. You feel wonderful. God's forgiven you. You're, you're clean. But the minute you do something wrong, you get back into that mess again. So you've got to cross the bridge, 1 John 1, 9, to get back over here and walk in again with God in obedience. A lot of times God will check your obedience out Bob, yes, honey, would you take the trash out for me? Yeah, I'll get to it right away as soon as I finish this, what I'm doing. So I come back about an hour later, and the trash has been taken out by Susan. And it makes me feel so good. <laughs> I feel bad. I mean, huh? Is, is your conscience awake? I mean, is that not true? And you say, why did I obey then? I would feel so much better. Say, but see, I learn in that. And after about a year of training in that area, she said, honey, would you take the trash out? Yeah, man. <laughs> huh? What have I learned? See, I was afflicted, say, when I was disobedient, but I've learned not to get afflicted anymore because now I'm obedient and I take that trash right out. Hello? Hello, anybody out there? Yes. All right, all right. Yeah, uh, young folks, uh, I've read somewhere in the Bible that about obeying your parents. Uh, is, that, is, is that real today? Do you have to do that day today? See, Dave knows. He's, yeah, he's, and and it, if you're disobedient, what happens? You get punished? Like, right now? Now, see, now when you grow up to be a young man and you're not around dad and mom no more, the Lord will have to take that job over. D does, he, does he correct you now? Yeah? You ever felt like God was correcting you? Look at that. He's young and he knows. Bob, why don't you go astray anymore? I don't want to be afflicted no more. I don't like that. But see, I'll be afflicted as long as I'm disobedient. See, we, we think, sometimes we think, uh, somehow God's dead. Uh, 
sometimes we, we think, I think people think that, well, God's not a father. A father will correct his children because he loves us. And when you're being corrected, yes, for the moment, it doesn't seem good, but it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of unrighteousness. I just just checking and see if you's awake. That's all. Mm-hmm. So now you appreciate the blood more. See? And you so you you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And here's what happens after a while. Turn to uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse se uh, 7, I think it is. Yeah, 1 John. I want to show you something here that's very good. 1 John. Hallelujah. Let's see. Let's start with, uh, man, this is all good. Let's start with verse 6. Now, <clears throat> if there's something between you and me or anybody else, there won't be no fellowship. Say, this is how you tell if you're walking in the Spirit. If I'm walking in the Spirit and you're walking in the Spirit, there's going to be fellowship. If you're not walking in the Spirit and I'm walking in the Spirit, there won't be no fellowship because you will not open up your spirit for my spirit to fellowship with your spirit. See, spirit touches spirit. Intellect touches intellect. Flesh touches flesh. People are starving. Husbands and wives are starving for spirit fellowship. Oh, they have the externals are there, but that intimate closeness of spirit to spirit, many people miss it. That's one thing, and I'm, I know I use my life a lot, but that God has done a work in us. But me and Susan, we we there spiritually. We touch each other spiritually. We love each other spiritually. See, we're spirit beings. Okay. Now, there's a feeling inside of you that the, you will detect that if somebody is not fellowshipping with your spirit. Anybody identify with that? Let's see if you can identify with it. Mm -hmm. So if that happens, Lord, is this me or is that them? Well, I have learned that I'm the only one right in the whole crowd. Now, you laugh at that, but I do know a man that was right and the whole world was wrong. His name was Noah. Noah was right, and the whole rest of the world was wrong. And God saved him, and the rest of them went down the drain. I want us to read this scripture, put it on the board. You got it there? All right, what is that? I can't half see it. So if we say we are partakers together and enjoy fellowship with him, when we live and move and are walking about in darkness, we are both speaking falsely and do not live and practice the truth which the gospel presents. This is why it's so important that if I know that I've offended you, that fellowship is at stake. And if I knew that I offended uh, uh, Mike, I would come and clear it up. Mike, I know I offended you. I didn't mean to, but I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? All right. If he really forgives me, what's happened? We have restored the fellowship. Now, just suppose that you are mad at 10 people. What kind of condition is your spirit in? You wonder, what? what's wrong with me? I can't smile. I can't shout. I can't jump. I can't speak in tongues. Uh, what is wrong with me? See, they're soul ties. Those are evil soul ties. Now, let's follow what the Scripture says. 
Look what it says there. Let's read that again. I want everybody to read that. So we, if we say we are partakers together, talking about you and me. If we are really partakers together, we will enjoy fellowship together with him. You ever notice, I can tell when people begin to backslide. They start out here on the front row. <laughs> Everybody look back. <laughs> and I know, and I know it's not long, they'll be gone. That's true. I'll tell you the truth. If you can't stand truth, don't come to the shield. <laughs> so some people, what, 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 what's wrong with me? Well, let's sit down and talk. How many people you hate? I hate my daddy. I hate my mama. I hate my uncle. I hate the preacher. I hate the elders. I hate the deacons. I hate everybody. I hate myself. You're most miserable. And you'll stay around that mountain of affliction and pain. And it's where you'll live and die like that until you learn. That the pain of trying to fellowship with this particular person that is so hard to try to connect with him and fellowship with him, it is hard. It's, it's like suffering. Wait, wait, wait a minute now. Yeah, but over here, if I get mad at him and shut him out of my life, this affliction is worse than this trying to fellowship with this guy or this woman or this person that just seems to be... Andre. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? All right. See, this is for the deep. Deep calls us the deep now. We owe nobody nothing but, tell me, love. All right, now let's get time's going by. See, you got that. You can take that home and read it. All right. Look at verse 7 now. That's what we're, verse 7, okay? Verse 7. But if we really are living and walking in the light, if we really are living, living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light, that's, that's Jesus, we have true, unbroken fellowship with one another. Duh. Amen. How are we doing, saints? Amen. How do I get back in fellowship with my husband? He won't cooperate. Boy, that is hard. Hmm. While I was yet a, a sinner, Christ loved me and died for me. That's suffering. Yeah, I know. Can you love that person that just won't do what you want them to do? It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. Of course, I'm easy to love. Who couldn't love me? I mean, I don't have no faults or nothing like that, you know. And besides that, I'm so cute. I mean, who couldn't love me? See, that's our thinking. But I can't love that person. No way in the world. He wears his shoes backwards, and I'm not going to love anybody who wears his shoes, shoes backwards. Now, let's make sure we understand the Scriptures there now. God's talking to us because he wants to get us into a position of power. You see? And how many people in your life that you've crossed off? I 
I know it's hard to love some folks. Sometimes I wish I didn't know anybody and I wouldn't have any problems. <laughs> I just love to be on an island by myself and Susan. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, you will be by yourself if you don't learn how to show yourself friendly to those that aren't friendly to you. And don't let their stuff get inside of you. Get yourself cleaned up, love everybody. That doesn't mean we have to go along with what they say or what they do. We can disagree. We can disagree in a loving way. I don't care if you think I'm ugly. I looked in the mirror the other day. And I was. All right, there's my sense of humor. Y'all pray for me, will <laughs> All right, now look at this now. But if we really are living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, removes us from all sin and guilt, keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. That's the benefit of walking in the light. The blood automatically continues 24-7, cleanses you because you're in the light. Hello? Now you don't have to... Run over to 1 John 1, 9, drop down there to verse 8 and confess your sins because you're walking in the light and the, the, the promise is the blood will just automatically cleanse you and you walk daily cleansed and you feel good and you feel wonderful and you don't have to have all that pain to learn discipline. You have learned that just by walking in the light, God does a tremendous work in your life and you free, you're free. You can bless people. They can speak mean to you. They can spit at you. They can do whatever. It don't bother you because you are walking in the light. Amen. How many of you understand where I'm coming from now? Okay. So you leave the place today and you go back and you get home. And everybody goes to bed and you get back on your computer. <laughs> oh, my. Mm. Oh, am I hitting it tonight? Huh? But see, God loves you. He will not leave you by alone. See, the fallen nature in us craves that type of thing, the desire in us. This is why this is why when you learn, not only did Jesus Christ die on the cross, but you died also. And this is why you're in a sanctifying uh, mood, so to speak. God working in you, making you willing to do his good pleasure. Because you won't be able to hardly to give that thing up. And there's many ways that God's work, but one way is... I need a demonstration. I mean, I need somebody I can demonstrate. All right, Floyd's good for this. Now, now you might not believe this, but I put, have your hand now. And uh, let me have it. Now say uncle. <laughs> say uncle. Okay. Good. All right, let me have you back. Hip you back over here. Don't, don't, don't sit in there. Okay, there we go. Sometimes God has to just do that. Because he loves you. And you don't go around that mountain. Now you're over here. Wow, walking in the light. I'm walking in the light. Walking in the light. And the blood cleanses me. I don't have to drop, uh, drop down to 
1 John 1, 8 all the time. I'm over here in the light in verse 7. And the blood continuously cleanses me. I can sing hallelujah. I can look you square in the face and say, I love you. You love me. We're loving each other because we are family. There is so much. And then the Bible becomes revelation. You're in the light. Have you ever tried to walk in the darkness? When you go home, cut all the lights out in the house and try to find your toothbrush. And then when you cut the light on, you appreciate the light. See, when you spend enough time over here, <laughs> yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. <coughs> Get over here in the light, Bob, and then and, and give me a break, will you? I'm tired of uh, twisting your hand and spanking you. Yes, Lord. And I'm over here in the light. Fellowship one with another. Mike, would you mind standing there? What time is it? Gosh, I got five just getting started. Stand over there. If he's got something against me, or I might have grunted and he got mad because I grunted. How many of you think there'll be fellowship there? If he's in the light, and if I'm in the light, what's going to happen? Have fellowship. Fellowship. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Old buddy boy. Aren't you glad we don't have to just jump over there in First John 1, 9 all the time? Uh, yep. But thank God it's there if we need it. But don't you enjoy walking in the light because we have fellowship one with another? That's powerful, isn't it? Okay, appreciate it. Can you imagine how God manifests himself because he is light and there is no darkness in him? Now, John says in verse 8, I meant to say verse 9, but verse 8, if we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we are sinners, oh my goodness, how many people, uh, <clears throat> no, I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't eat those last cookies. You can't prove it. What's that on your face? What? What are you talking about? All around your mouth. That's cookies, isn't it? Oh, it is? That's cookies. Oh. Oh, I don't know how it got there. Have you ever met it? They will not admit they're wrong. Well, all right, demonstration again. He just, see, he will not admit that he's wrong. All right. Say you're wrong. All right. Round the mountain again. <laughs> He'll find out by simply saying, I'm wrong, and he'll get happy about it, and he don't have to get around that mountain over there and get that treatment again. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. And many of you don't realize it, but you're in this process. So my counsel to you, get over here in the light Would you step up here again? No, no. You don't have to worry because you're in the light, boy. Remember, you, remember you went astray before you was afflicted. But since you've been afflicted, you walk in the light. Sit down. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? That's the way God works. So you might as well get in the light and stay in the light. But if you do fail, if, that little word if, you got 1 John 1, 9, you confess it, you won't have to get that arm treatment, and it's clear, you get back over here in the light, and you walk in the light as he is in the light, and we're both in the light, and we have fellowship with one another. We have fellowship with one another. Now, if you don't have fellowship with somebody in this congregation, maybe you need to go and confess your uh, faults to that person. Because you're not going to, you're not go, you're going to go around the mountain. You're going to go around the mountain. Are you listening to me? 
Hmm? Might be your daddy, might be your mama, might be the next door neighbor. They throw trash over in your yard every Sunday. See, when the whole body of Christ sees this and then learns to walk in the light, they don't have to have God disciplining them all the time. But most of us won't learn how to walk in the light. Until we're disciplined and we have to suffer. Because, see, I used to go astray, but I don't go astray no more because, because why? I've been afflicted. See, there's many different ways of being. I'm not talking about God putting sickness on you, nothing like that. But I'm talking about you'll just be miserable. That's affliction enough. You just be miserable, and you'll wonder, where are you, God? And you're just miserable. And this is why a lot of people don't want to come to church. Because they know they've been up late last night watching TV. Things that they shouldn't watch. How many of you know I've had some discipline in that area as a pastor? Bob, you're watching that and you're the shepherd? <sighs> Well, y'all pray for me. Well, don't just, ooh, yes, Lord, I got, I got, ooh, ooh, get, get over here in the light, Bob. How many in here would put their hand in a rattlesnake's mouth? Let's see. Well, Mrs. Jane, look at it. She hides her face every time to talk about a snake. See, see, that discipline will be so worked into you, you won't mess with that snake no more because you know he's going to bite you. And you ain't going around that mountain no more, so you stay over here in the light with protection. And you're being cleansed 24-7. God's talking to you, you're talking to God, you're having fellowship with God, and you're having fellowship with one another. Time's run out. God bless you. I hope you learned something. Now go out there and practice it. Amen. God bless you. If you need prayer, come up.